Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games from Scratch, and today we are looking at a magical tool. This one is a tool for creating animation frames in between other animation frames, something called tweening. Uh, so basically what you do is you feed it in a set number of frames of animation, and it automatically creates more frames of animation for you using an algorithm. A pretty straightforward concept, and when you see it, you're going to immediately go, hey, wait a minute, is that made in Godot? And yes, this is yet another tool made in the Godot game engine, which is always kind of cool, but frankly, game engines are good hosts for game development tools especially something like Godot where you've got a full UI toolkit built in and so on. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it right now. This is Bitmap Flow. It is available for Windows only, but the source code is out there. So if you want to build it for whatever platform you want, you should be fine. Uh, but there are binaries available for Windows. What it does, again, is creates in between. So if you've got one animation, what it does is creates more frames of animation in between. We'll come back to the website in just a second, which, by the way, if you want to skip the whole video, dare you, uh, we've got available at boxite.itch.io forward slash bitmap flow. I will, of course, leave that in the linked article down below if you want to go ahead and try this guy out. So instead, let's do a demonstration. Here you can see bitmap flow's user interface, and yeah, it's immediately recognizable as Godot project, pretty much because of the, the default grays and the fonts being used. Uh, you'll also notice when you launch bitmap flow, uh, there's the... Uh, Godot logo uh, on the icon. So anyways, how do you use this? Well, what you need is an animation of sorts. So what I have here is someone I randomly grabbed off the interwebs. You can see it right here. And this is just a set of walk animations. I don't know who this is, by the way, so don't use it, don't redistribute it. But if you search for walk frames, you will find this guy right here. And what I'm interested in is we'll do the left walk frame. We're gonna take these frames of animation right there. And what you see is we've got about a dozen frames of animation in that sequence. And what we're going to do is turn that into more frames. And that is what bitmap flow is all about. So we've got that guy right there. We go ahead, file. And we can load in either an animated GIF, a sprite sheet, or separate frame. So each frame has its own individual file. We're going to load it in as a sprite sheet, and we're just going to go ahead and select that PNG file right there. Now it's a matter of basically telling this guy how many frames you've got. Again, I'm only really interested in this sequence right here. So our frame count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Learn to count with Mike today. All right, so we got 12 there, uh, and there are 12 frames in the row. So this is immediately going to give us our first row right there. Now we're going to experiment a bit with the size. I pre-did this before we came here. These are really weirdly sized sprites, by the way. So they're 95 wide, and they are 158 tall. So what you're seeing is all of a sudden we've got our first sequence of frames captured. You can see a nice preview of which frames it's going to work with. But what we want to do in this scenario is actually offset down to the second row, which is about 158 pixels down, and you're going to see a visual indicator. So we've got a nice box around all of the frames it's going to go ahead and work with. And now there's no margin space between them, so we'll go ahead and click OK, and you'll see it just extracted out our frames. And over here, it's got the interpolated frames. So what we've got here is the number of in-betweens to generate. So what you're saying here is if you say 2x, you're going to go... So here you can see that 12 becomes 24 and so on. So if I sit here and I say, OK, make me two in-between instead of just one in between. So now you're gonna have the original frames and it's gonna go ahead and create two more frames of animation for you. So now we're up to 36 frames of animation in this sequence. And really that's kind of the extent of it. You can play with the motion a little bit. I find this problematic to be honest, uh, but we can speed things up, change the motion out. Uh, I found if I change this number too much, it definitely caused some issues. So let's, Let's go to 1.5. So you're not seeing a huge amount of difference on that one. Next up, we have the flow algorithm. This is actually what is calculating the frames in between. And this really depends on your, your sprite that you are working with. In this case, the simple flow actually is doing a pretty good job of interpolating the, the, the starting sprite. Even with something like the waving uh, thing he's holding in his hand, it does a good job with that. Uh, however, we can switch to the other algorithm they got, which is dense RLOF. And this one is going to depend on the sprite, but I find in this case it implemented a whole lot of jaggies and noise into the scene. So I am going to stick with Simple Flow. And then you've got some other sections here. And for some reason, if you want to see the motion vectors, you can turn those on as well and get an idea of what's going on here. But basically, that is the gist of it. We've got uh, some documentation telling you what these three are all about. I, I don't find that they make a huge difference for me. But what we've essentially done is taken our original 12 frames of animation, which we saw, once again, right here, just this row, these 12 frames. And what Bitmap Flow is going to do is turn that into 36 frames. Or if we want to be ambitious, we could have it turn into... 
uh, let's see, 60 frames. All right, 60 frames of animation being calculated by our computer for us. Once we're good with the results, we just come back up here, go file, export out the sprite sheet, uh, and we'll call this uh, same thing, 60 FPS. All right, there we go. And there you see our new sprite sheet is generated. And click OK and done. And go back over here, and there we got our original version. Again, we used to have just a row, and now it has generated 60 frames. Uh, and they all look clean and crisp like they were drawn by hand. You're going to see, again, you might occasionally get some artifacting, like I'm noticing right here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in well here. Uh, we had something weird happen with his foot. Right there, it disconnected over these frames of animation from the original. So you may have to do a little bit of cleanup, but for the most part, and right here, something really weird happened to his leg there. Uh, but for the most part, it does a solid job of interpolating frames of animation. And truth of the matter is, those glitchy ones that you're seeing right there, well, in animation, if you look for it, you definitely see his foot separating there. But for the most part, uh, it really speeds up the process of creating those in-between frames. So even if you're an artist, you could start with like... Uh, uh, you know, a two or three frame animation uh, of something and have this in between the versions and then you just clean up the versions in a sprite editor of your choice a heck of a lot easier than doing like uh, a clone copy paste and so on assuming the algorithm gets it right. Again, some things are going to work better with this algorithm. Uh, my experiences are basically this, to be honest. I, I don't get good results from it. Simple flow is the better algorithm for me. Uh, these values, again, playing around with them. See if I can, no, that didn't help. Uh, didn't really change here. Let's jack that one up a whole lot and see what it does. Uh, well, it definitely changed the what happens with the foot. I don't think it's liking that, that it's passing in behind the other surface because it's really only that foot that there's a problem with here. Uh, but you can play around with the settings up here and easily get it to go. There's also the ability to export it out as a number of different frames, which would create 60 individual frames or however many you're creating with your current uh, settings. Or you can also export out as an animated GIF. Now, I actually find the GIFs come out kind of noisy, so I'll call this one noisy GIF. Uh, but if you want to create an animated GIF, you can do so. And there you see it. So I, I do find, for some reason, there's, there's a little bit of noise in the GIF. Um, you can't zoom, huh? Uh, if you look really closely, some of the artifacting around the edge, hopefully that can get cleaned up in another release. Because quite frankly, this was literally just released. So give the guy a little bit of time to make it better and cooler, but even as it stands right now, if you're using it to take a simple number of frames and create more out of it, it's already a powerful and useful tool. A couple things to be aware of, uh, you do need to have the Visual Studio redistributable already installed on your machine for it to work. Uh, you know what, there's probably, if you've got Visual Studio installed, you've got that. Uh, if you've got an application installed, there's probably about a 50% chance you already have that installed, maybe even higher than that. But if you do run into problems, make sure you install the Visual Studio redistributable. Uh, otherwise, you can see here the, the basic parameters we kind of went through all of those and then you can get into the advanced. Oh, the advanced aren't documented. Okay, so I have no idea what those advanced do either. Uh, there is advanced, do there's official documentation on the other algorithms. Uh, so simple flow and uh, the uh, dense ROLF. If you want to learn more about the algorithms in use here, uh, he's got links to both of those as well. I'm not going to link them. I'll link directly to this one. Uh, and you can see that uh, some of the details, it works best if the sprites only have movement in a two dimensional plane. Uh, so towards or away from the viewer is kind of why I, I, you know, you don't want to change size. So I think that the original algorithm I should, where they had to walk towards the player, they would be probably fine, but if they got smaller or bigger, and I don't think you want things where like, like they spin on the axis, it probably has more trouble with that. But for traditional things like walk animations, uh, this tool should be good to go. Uh, it is under the MIT, uh, license. Uh, source code is available. I don't have it linked immediately, but I will definitely link that in the article down below. But uh, the main thing here is this is a new open source tool built on the Godot game engine under the MIT license. It is binaries for Windows only, but as I said earlier, it is a Godot project. So if you know how to build a project in Godot, you should be able to get it working with Linux or Windows, no problems at all. It just only provides binaries for the one particular version. Definitely a cool tool. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.